Good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor. Well, the Brussels attacks continues to be our top focus. Now, police has released new images of the suspected airport bomber. We'll get you all the details. Let us begin by taking a look at the other top stories as well in headlines. Massive hunt on for one of the suspects of the Belgium bombings that killed over 30 people. Security alert issued across Europe. Islamic State claims responsibility. World leaders condemn a Brussels terror attack. Uh, EU leaders call for a joint EU policy on freedom and security. Prime Minister Modi's uh, scheduled visit to Brussels on 30th of March to go on. BDP likely to decide on alliance with BJP after its meeting on a Thursday. Opposition demands BDP chief Mehbooba Mufti to reveal details of her meeting with the Prime Minister on Tuesday. Pakistan opts out of the ambitious SARC satellite project. It will now be called a South Asia satellite project proposed by Prime Minister Modi in 2014. India take on Bangladesh in the World T20 encounter today. England to take on Afghanistan in another match. The day is the biggest story in our terror group. Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the horrific suicide attacks that killed over 30 people in Brussels yesterday. Now our hunt is on for the suspects. Coordinated assaults at the Belgian airport and metro station has triggered security alerts across Europe. Here are all the details. Three most wanted suspects in Brussels. Security cameras at the Saventum airport in Brussels captured this photograph of three male suspects whom the Belgian police believe were behind the attacks. Two of the suicide bombers were killed and the third man, the one wearing a light-coloured jacket and hat, is apparently on the run. He was seen walking with two other suspects shortly before the blasts. L'État islamique a revendiqué les attentats par le biais d'une agence de presse. Cela doit encore être formellement vérifié et à ce stade, il n'est pas possible d'établir un lien formel avec les attentats de Paris. Well, the Paris attacks showed us that there was clearly a, a substantial network at play in Europe. So not just the, you know, the nine attackers, but the support team that drove the vehicles that provided accommodation, sourced the weaponry, etc. That was then illustrated when Abdeslam was able to go on the run for four months. Bombing operations are underway across Brussels. An explosive device containing nails, chemical products and ice flag were found in an apartment in Sherbuk area. Meanwhile, the forensic team worked round the clock on Tuesday night at the Melbeek metro station to find some evidence. The metro station where the blast took place is near the EU headquarters. Areas which connect central Brussels with the EU institutions have been shot. Brussels is on high alert. Er veel doden zijn en er wordt mensen die zwaar gewonden. Het OCAT heeft de beslissing genomen naar niveau 4 te gaan. Wat betekent... Islamic State took to the social media to claim responsibility for the twin attacks. In a statement, it threatened further attacks on countries involved in operations against IS in Syria and Iraq. A day after terror gripped Brussels, shocked commuters waited at the highly secured metro stations. Comment on se sent dans dans des moments comme ça, c'est pas évident. Hein? Je pense, c'est pas évident de garder son calme et de bien respirer et, et de supporter l'angoisse aussi qui est là. It's difficult to take the train, uh, but you, you you must have I you must have the courage to take it because. If you don't retake the, the normal life, you give the terrorists the chance to, 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 win, to win the game and that we, we, can, we can do that. The coordinated twin attacks came just days after Belgian police arrested Salah Abdeslam, the only living suspect of Paris terror attacks. Suicide blasts ripped through the Belgian capital Brussels on Tuesday as terrorists targeted an airport and a metro, killing several and injuring many others. High security is in place in EU borders as well in the wake of an escalating migrant crisis. Spain is on high-risk alert 
Germany and Britain has also stepped up security. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Let's listen in to some of the reactions from Belgium on the Brussels attack. For ieder van ons zal deze 22 maart nooit meer een dag zijn als een andere. Heel ons land draagt de pijn van de levens die gebroken zijn, van de diepe wonden die geslagen zijn. Yeah, it's a day of mixed feelings. Uh, from, the, from one side, very sad about what happened and, uh, for the victims and the family and the, and the, and the friends of the victims. Uh, so we share the sadness of these, of these uh, people. And then from the other side, also uh, the conviction that we uh, will go on the fight against this terrorist and the violent extremism. This will be overcome, of course. That is, well, we are a resilient people, we are a resilient capital. We will have to overcome it, but it will take some days. And war leaders have condemned the attack in Belgium. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has joined the US President, UK Prime Minister and other world leaders in expressing their condolences. EU leaders have now called for a joint policy to tackle terror. Prime Minister Narendra Modi lead world leaders in condemning the Belgium attack. He tweeted saying the news was disturbing and the attacks condemnable. We condemn this attack in the strongest possible terms. We stand in solidarity with the people and government of Belgium. Our mission in Belgium is closely monitoring the situation. They have already issued helpline numbers. As of now, we have no reports of any Indian casualties. The US and UK saying they stand in solidarity with Belgium and will offer all assistance in fighting terror. And this is yet another reminder that the world must unite we must be together, regardless of nationality or race or faith, in fighting against the scourge of terrorism. These were attacks in Belgium. They could just be attacks, just as well be attacks in, in Britain or in France or Germany or elsewhere in Europe. And we need to stand together against these appalling terrorists and make sure they can never win. The United Nations saying the attacks won't shake Europe's commitment to human rights and democracy. The Secretary General hopes those responsible will be swiftly brought to justice. He's confident that Belgium's and Europe's commitments to human rights, democracy and peaceful coexistence will continue to be the true and lasting response to the hatred and violence of which they became a victim today. Call from EU leaders coming for a joint response against the attack on the idea of Europe. Wir werden in jeder Weise mit seiner Regierung und mit den belgischen Sicherheitskräften zusammenarbeiten um die Schuldigen für die heutigen Verbrechen zu finden, festzusetzen und zu bestrafen. Demandons à toute l'Europe de bien prendre conscience, c'est que à travers ce qui s'est produit aujourd'hui à Bruxelles, c'est elle qui est visée, ce qu'elle représente, ses valeurs, ses principes. Et donc nous devons encore davantage coordonner nos efforts. Ci vuole un patto europeo, un patto per la libertà e la sicurezza. I terroristi puntano a toglierci la libertà perché sanno che la libertà è ciò che costituisce il marchio di, marchio di fabbrica dell'Europa. Già veniamo collaborando desde il passato, però stiamo disposti a farlo con maggior intensità si cabe. La nostra solidarietà con il popolo belga e con il suo governo è plena, è totale e è assoluta. Cities across the world came out in solidarity with Belgium following the attacks. The Belgium flag lighting landmarks across these cities. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, despite the terror attacks, there is no change in Prime Minister Narendra Modi's proposed three-nation tour beginning 30th of March. Now, Modi will visit the US, Brussels and Saudi Arabia. The Prime Minister will attend the crucial nuclear security summit in Washington, India-EU summit in Brussels, and then travel to Saudi Arabia, a key partner of India in the sensitive Gulf region. Now, Brussels will be the Prime Minister's first stopover. Besides attending the EU-India summit in Brussels, Prime Minister Modi will hold wide-ranging talks with his Belgian counterpart, Charles Michel, on a variety of issues of mutual interest. From Brussels, Prime Minister Modi will leave for Washington to attend the fourth nuclear security summit on 31st and of March and 1st of April, where he will be making some specific announcements and proposals with regard to nuclear security. From Washington, Prime Minister Modi will travel to Saudi Arabian capital Riyadh on 2nd of April for a two-day visit at the invitation of King Salman bin 
Abdul Aziz Al Saud. Now, this is the highest level visit from India to Saudi Arabia after the then uh, Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh trip uh, to the Gulf nation in 2010. Meanwhile, back home, a car was snatched at gunpoint by three youths near Sujanpur in Pathan Court. This is months after a similar act was carried out by suspected Pakistani terrorists before they attacked the Air Force base. Now, according to police, three youths, two of them reportedly Sikhs, snatched a car at a gunpoint from a person on the highway near Sujanpur. Now, barricades have been put up and a search is on to nab the miscreants. Six terrorists, uh, remember, uh, suspected to be belonging to Pakistan-based Jaisi Mohammed outfit, had uh, attacked the Air Force base on 2nd of January. The strike had left seven security personnel dead, with all the six terrorists also being killed. The terrorists had uh, hijacked the vehicle of a Punjab police SP as uh, they headed to the Air Force base. News from Jammu and Kashmir. Well, in a bid to end the deadlock over government formation in the state, now PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti met Prime Minister Narendra Modi at his residence in Delhi on Tuesday. Meanwhile, former Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Omar Abdullah has offered uh, the governor to conduct uh, mid-term polls in view of the stalemate. The state is presently under governor's rule. Mehbooba Mufti's meeting with Prime Minister Narendra Modi has fueled hopes the channels of communication between the two parties, PDP and BJP, have opened once again. The meet comes a day after Union Minister Arun Jaitley asked Mehbooba Mufti to make up her mind on the alliance issue. The BJP had earlier made it clear that it was not ready to accept any new conditions for the formation of the coalition government in Jammu and Kashmir. Meanwhile, Mehbooba termed her almost 30-minute meeting with Modi as very positive. Uh, it was, uh, you know, a very positive meeting. Or पिछले जो दो ढाई तीन महीने से थोड़ा सा stalemate वगैरह चल रहा था, तो आज मैं मुतमीन हूँ प्राइम मिनिस्टर के साथ मिलने के बाद मैं मुतमीन हूँ. I have called a legislative party meet on Thursday. So since my party had, you know, authorized me कि आप जो decision लेंगी, तो इसलिए मैं वापस जाऊंगी अपने legislators के पास और वहाँ बैठके हम आगे क्या करना है, कैसे चलना है, उसका फैसला करेंगे. This is Mehbooba's second visit to the national capital in five days. She had held talks with BJP President Amit Shah on Thursday. Very positive development because people of Jammu and Kashmir they were looking for the uh, establishment of a popular government in Jammu and Kashmir. Now the uh, meeting has been held and I think whatever uh, doubts or whatever uh, apprehensions the, our alliance partner would have, that would have been cleared. The opposition parties meanwhile have asked the BJP to rise above the narrow confines of power and form a government in Jammu and Kashmir. Progress uh, and path of development in JNK begins forthwith. So we request Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi to, to rise above the narrow confines of power and ensure that PDP BJP government is formed at the earliest without the trappings of power and in order to ensure progress and peace and development in JNK. Don't kill democracy. Step down. Let people take a decision. In, in the election. It is in the interest of democracy mm -hmm. that no further delay in government formation should take place. It shows the lust for power, BJP's lust for power, BJP, how opportunistic BJP can be. The state is under governor's rule since the death of Chief Minister Mufti Muhammad Said three months ago. Since then, the BJP and PDP have been unable to reach a consensus on government formation. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, in related news, with no formal word from PDP on government formation in Jammu and Kashmir, now the opposition parties are demanding a clear word from Chief Mehbooba Mufti over the issue. On Tuesday, Mufti had met Prime Minister Narendra Modi, describing her meeting as a very positive, reviving hopes of a new government formation in the state. However, the opposition parties have slammed Mufti for her silence on the issue. The People's Democratic Front has demanded that Mufti must tell the people of the state what transpired between her and the Prime Minister during their meeting. The Jammu and Kashmir National Panthers Party has also said that Mufti must tell the people of the state what her demands were and if those were accepted by the BJP leadership. Mehbooba is now expected to convene a legislative party meeting soon in which she is expected to be elected as a leader. The next step will be government formation. 
News from down south now when BJP President uh, Amit Shah will review the political situation in Tamil Nadu today. And this comes in the backdrop of uh, uncertainty over the BJP's alliance uh, prospects in the state, especially with the DMDK. Now, Shah is uh, scheduled to attend a function involving uh, Kanchi Seer uh, Jayendra Saraswati. Now, he's also likely to meet his senior office bearers of the state unit. BJP's alliance prospects are with the DMDK, which was part of the NDA for the 2014 Lok Sabha polls, are in limbo, with the actor politician not only giving confusing signals on a tie-up, but also announcing the party's decision to go alone in the May 16th Assembly polls. The DMK is also wooing a DMDK, with its chief M. Karunanidhi saying that he has not given up uh, hope over the alliance. BJP uh, chief uh, Amit Shah will leave for Kerala after his Tamil Nadu trip. Meanwhile, BJP on Tuesday also released its uh, third list of uh, 14 candidates for the West Bengal Assembly elections. This makes the total number of seats for, it, for which it has announced nominees is uh, to 260 out of a total of 294 constituencies. The party left uh, three seats, uh, Kalimpong, Darjeeling and uh, Kursiong for its ally, that is uh, Gorkha Janmukti Morcha. Elections in West Bengal uh, will be conducted over six phases uh, between 4th of April and 5th of May. BJP also announced its uh, first list of uh, 22 candidates for the Kerala Assembly polls and the names include uh, that of uh, its uh, state chief, uh, Kumamam Rajashekaran, who will contest uh, from Vattiyur Kavi. And more election-related stories uh, in Election Wrap. Well, the Election Commission on Tuesday expressed satisfaction over the poll preparedness in Assam, but asked the administration to ensure that the licensed arms are deposited and illegal weapons are seized. It also asked the authorities to look into the movement of black money and effective deployment of central forces to ensure free and fair polls. Led by Chief Election Commissioner Naseem Zaidi, the full bench of the Commission was in the state for a two-day visit. 380 people across 61 constituencies filed their nominations on Tuesday for the second phase of the Assembly polls in Assam. The nominations uh, take uh, the total tally in these co constituencies uh, to 595. The scrutiny of uh, these nominations will be done on 24th of March and the last date uh, for withdrawing will be 26th of March. The BJP is planning to field cricketer S. Srisanth as its candidate for the Kerala Assembly elections to be held on 16th of May. Srisanth said that he would decide today whether to contest the election or not. Srisanth reportedly received a call from a top BJP leader in Delhi requesting him to contest from the three Puri Thura Assembly constituencies. He is likely to meet BJP Chief Amit Shah who will also be in Kerala today. In Breakfast News, we'll take a very short break. Uh, we'll be back with more news details. The sacred relics of Buddha were unearthed in Piprava in Uttar Pradesh. Buddha. Buddhist monks from all over the world visit the National Museum to pay their respects. These charred bone fragments of Buddha are housed in the gold canopy gifted by the royal family of Thailand. Welcome back. News from Andhra Pradesh. Well, uh, two months after Rohit Vemula's uh, death at the University of Hyderabad, now Professor P. Appar Rao resumed charge as the Vice Chancellor on Tuesday. However, his return to the university sparked a row with the students boycotting classes and even protest protesting in front of uh, the VC Lodge on the campus. Hyderabad University students ransacked the house and office of Vice Chancellor Professor P. Apparao as he joined work nearly two months after going on leave. Students have been protesting ever since research scholar Rohit Vemula committed suicide inside the varsity campus. The state police was called in to bring the situation under control. We informed all these students 
and uh, actually the the case is in court hmm. everybody knows he is the main one in rohit's death okay. so almost two ma three months uh, two months get over and again without informing anyone he simply uh, i mean delivered i uh, noticed and he came and occupied his seat and he started executive council meeting along with some students okay. all of uh, even uh, every every person of indian city every indian citizen knows that thing okay. but what happened again wantedly provoked the um, uh, provo provoking the provoking of students wantedly they did this thing and they have started this executive council meeting also tomorrow there will be academic council meeting we are going to stop that academic council meeting tomorrow there are problems in hyderabad central university and uh, Uh, there is a demand for justice to rogis uh, how could uh, the, uh, anybody keep quiet uh, yeah, the student a brilliant uh, scholar was uh, forced to commit uh, suicide to take such an extreme step and uh, what is the justice available wapas laya to ab wapas la ke to ab ye ladai khali central university hyderabad tak hi simit nahi rahi balki aaj to स्मानिया यूनिवर्सिटी के स्टूडेंट्स ने भी उस प्रोटेस्ट में अपने आप को शामिल किया जो वीसी के खिलाफ आज सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी हैदराबाद में हो रहा है प्रोफेसर राव रिटर्न टू दर्सिटी आफ्टर बींग अपॉइंटेड एज वाइस चांसलर बाय द एच आर डी मिनिस्ट्री ही हाव एवर सेट ही विल कंटिन्यू एज द वाइस चांसलर एंड नॉट बाउ डाउन टू एजुटेशन मैं जब लीव पे गया था वो उन लोगों को बता के नहीं गया था मैं जब वापस आया उन लोगों को बता के नहीं आया हर स्टेट में हर सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी में जो एक रूलिंग पार्टी विल अपॉइंट एंड अपोजिशन पार्टी विल अपोज एंड दस दिन के अंदर अंदर एक एक वाइस चांसलर को निकालनी होगी ये नहीं कुछ सबूत होनी है कुछ कुछ एविडेंस होनी है या तो कुछ न्याय स्थान में कुछ ऐसे कुछ मालूम होना है जब तक ये कुछ भी नहीं है ये अच्छा नहीं होता पूरी कोशिश करेंगे हमारे पूरे कोशिश रहेगा हमारे सीनियर टीचर्स बात करेंगे जब भी जो भी कंसर्न है वो कंसर्न लेके हमारे सामने आए हम बात करने के तैयार हैं जे एन यू स्टूडेंट यूनियन प्रेसिडेंट कन्हैया कुमार इज शेड्यूल्ड टू पार्टिसिपेट इन अ पब्लिक मीट एट द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑन ट्यूजडे हाबेबर लुकिंग एट द करंट सिचुएशन द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफिशियल हैव नॉट येट सैंक्शन द मीट बिफोर लिविंग फॉर हैदराबाद कन्हैया कुमार मेट कांग्रेस वाइस प्रेसिडेंट राहुल गांधी इन डेली Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV And the other big story of the day well Pakistan has decided to opt out of the ambitious Sark satellite project well the Sark project was proposed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi for all member countries of the regional grouping nearly one and a half years back Now, Modi during a last uh, Sark summit in Nepal in November 2014 had announced India's decision to develop the satellite to benefit all member countries in various fields including the telecommunication and telemedicine But with the Pakistan now opting out, the project has been renamed South Asia Satellite. In June 2014, Modi had asked ISRO to develop the satellite, which can be dedicated as a gift to the neighbouring countries. India had held deliberations with experts from other SARC countries to finalise the modalities for the satellite exclusively for the regional grouping. On to some international news. Well, US President Barack Obama wrapped up his historic visit to Cuba. Before wrapping up his three-day visit, Obama invoked a future of hope for the Caribbean island in an unprecedented live television address from the Grand Theater in capital Havana. Obama reiterated that he had come to bury the last remnants of the Cold War. He made an impassioned call for more freedom and democracy in the island nation. Obama also met a Cuban dissidents and held talks with uh, them. Obama wrapped up his visit to watching a friendly baseball match with his uh, Cuban counterpart Raul Castro. I, I believe citizens should be free to speak their mind without fear. <laughs> to organize and to criticize their government and to protest peacefully. and that the rule of law should not include arbitrary detentions of people who exercise those rights. Yes, I believe voters should be able to choose their governments in free and democratic elections. <laughs> not everybody agrees with me on this. Not everybody agrees with the American people on this, but I believe those human rights are universal. 
and more news from around the globe in World Wrap. Aung San Suu Kyi will become foreign minister in Myanmar's new civilian government. Her party, the NLD, has said she's also likely to head up energy, education and they'll be the minister in the president's office. The NLD only named 15 ministers for the 18 posts chosen by the civilian government, sparking speculation that Aung San Suu Kyi would take on four portfolios. A section of uh, the main terminal at the Denver International Airport was evacuated on Tuesday because of a possible security threat. The security alert was uh, lifted after the police uh, gave all clear to several suspicious packages. The security alert came in the wake of terror attacks in Brussels that left around 31 people dead and scores more injured. Turkish security forces on Tuesday arrested 10 suspected Islamic State members at the Syrian border. This is three days after a suicide attack in Istanbul. One of the members was wearing an explosives vest. The arrests come as the police hunt for three Turkish suspected members of an Islamic State cell believed to be planning more attacks in public places after Saturday's attack in Istanbul, which left four foreigners dead. Brazilian President Juma Rousseff has said that impeachment proceedings launched against her in Congress amounts to a coup attempt. She added uh, that she has done nothing wrong and will not resign. The statement comes as opposition lawmakers are seeking to remove her over allegations that she manipulated government uh, accounts to hide a growing deficit. Remember, Rousseff uh, began her second term in office 14 months ago. Time for news from the world of cricket and New Zealand has become the first T20 team to book a spot in the semi-finals of the ICC World T20 after a comfortable win of 22 runs over Pakistan. Give you opener, Martin Guptill sets the tone with a scintillating 80 runs from 48 balls, hitting 10 fours and 3 sixes. It was Guptill's 10th 50 in the game's shortest format. The right-handed batsman also shared an opening stand of 62 with captain Kane Williamson to help New Zealand to post 180 for 5 in Mohali. Pakistan's Sharjeel Khan gave his team a brisk start, scoring 47 runs. But after he knocked out, other batsmen found it difficult to survive Kiwi bowling. While in the women's match, Indian women's team has lost a thrilling a group league encounter against England by two wickets in Dharamshala. Batting first, India clawed their way for 90 for 8 uh, in 20 overs. In reply, England middle order and lower order survived some uh, nerdy moments before getting past the finishing line in 19 overs with the two wickets remaining. With England needing a three in the penultimate so over, skipper Mithali Raj dropped an easy catch uh, off uh, Anya. True soul of uh, Veda Krishnamurti's delivery to the and uh, the very next ball was hit past uh, the point fielder, much to the joy of the England dugout. <laughs> and now a look at the upcoming matches that will be played out today at the ICC World T20 tournament. Well, India will take on Bangladesh at the Chinnaswamy Stadium in Bangalore after a humiliating loss to New Zealand in their opening game and a marvelous win against arch rival Pakistan. India are now eyeing a place in the semi-finals by aiming to defeat Bangladesh in today's match. Now, Bangladesh needs to win their remaining matches and rely on other results going their way. Also in another match, uh, England and Afghanistan will be battling each other in uh, Delhi's Firosha Kotla. England will play their third game in the World T20 Super 10 stage in Group 1 against Afghanistan, looking to build on their big win against South Africa last time out. Well, interesting uh, matches there lined up for today. And with this, it is a wrap on this edition of news. Thanks for watching.